Hello and welcome to my channel. Today's video we are going to be making this little pumpkin um, man. I've called him Jack O'Lantern and he is um, mostly no sew. You're going to come from the vine all the way down, attached to the head, all the way down, attach the arms at the body, all the way down and attach the legs and then close. The only thing you're really going to have to sew on is this and we're just tying it on right here um, and then putting the little spider on if you decide to make him and his little cheeks and if you decide to give him a mouth. These two are actually the exact same pattern but turned out very differently depending on where you put the eyes. So I've put the eyes on row nine on this one and then in the video I'm putting the eyes on row seven on this one. So you'll have to decide um, where you think you want your eyes but a lot of it will be when you come back and forth with your stitching to make these indents. Just one thing before we get started. I'm not sure why, but I found this one video to be very challenging. And it wasn't that it was hard. It was that I was trying to combine three different videos into one, have them join smoothly. So there's a few things in there. It may kind of not make sense, but hopefully as you're going through making your guy, it'll slowly kind of just go through. Um, so I hope you enjoy this video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. Um, and yeah, let's get started. So I need to apologize for this little part. Um, I just want to start editing my video and I have no row one to five of the stem. So somewhere in between um, videoing and deleting and loading and reloading into the editor, I have somehow lost it. So I'm just going to have to redo um, the first five rows and then we will get back into um, the original stem as soon as I get this part redone. Okay, so you're going to make a loop, wrap the yarn over your finger, down and through, and just leave that little loop on the end, just like you are going to make a chain. You're going to put your, your needle or your hook in, grab your yarn, pull up and through and make one chain stitch. And all that does is secure your yarn to your loop and it does not count as a stitch. So for row one, we're going to do six single crochets into the loop. So one. two, three, four, five, and six. Grab your stitch marker. And for rows two to five, we're going to be doing um, six single crochets all the way around. And for the rest of the stem, we're also going to be doing four rows of every number. So if it's six single crochets, it'll be four rows of six single crochets, seven single crochets, four rows of seven single crochets. And what you're going to decide if you don't want to have this big long stem here, 
you're going to do between um, one and four rows of um, continuous single crochets. Okay, so for round two, six single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going to turn that the right way so we're not going inside out. Flip your stitch marker. Round three. Another six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six. For round four, another six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five. And six. And for round five, another six single crochets. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we'll go back to um, the original stem we did. Row six, we are going to do five single crochets and one increase for a total of seven. So this is slowly going to start getting a little bit easier to deal with. One, two, three, four, five, and our increase, oops, six and seven. Row seven to 10, we are just gonna do seven single crochets all the way around. Um, so we, you are going to be doing um, between one and four rows, whatever number you picked. I'll be doing four. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, oopsie, I went to both sides there. Seven, so that'll be one row of four. One, two, three, four, Five, six, 
seven. So that was two rows of four. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that was three rows of four. This will be our last row. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Row 11, you are gonna do six single crochets and one increase for a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight for the last stitch increase. For rows 12 to 15, you are just gonna do eight single crochets all the way around. Make sure you do the same number that you've been doing throughout the whole um, stem. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that was your first round of four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that was your second round of four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That was your third round of four. So for anyone doing four, this will be our last one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. For round 16, you are going to do three single crochets and one increase. Repeat that for a total of 10. So one, two, three, then you're going to increase. 
threes, four, and five. And then you're going to repeat what you just did. Six, seven, eight, and your increase, nine and ten. Now you're going to do your one to four rows. Um, you might want to consider, if you've only been doing one row, doing a couple more just so your stem is straighter instead of a perfect triangle. Um, but you'll be you have to play with that a little bit. I haven't experimented with that. I've only done this shape for this one. Okay, so 10 single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So that was our first round of four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that was our second row of four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That was our third row and our fourth row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, this last part is going to be the last chunk of our stem. So we are going to do, for row 21, four single crochets and one increase for a total of 12. One, two, three, four, and our increase, five and six, seven, eight, nine, Ten and our increase eleven and twelve. Rows twenty-two to twenty-five will just be four rows of twelve single crochets all the way around. One. Whoops! Did I get my stitch marker in there? Yep, I did. Two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And I'm going to keep counting just because it's a lot of stitches to try and remember what row I am. So I'm just going to continuously keep going till I have four sets of 12. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, flip your stitch marker, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 What the heck? What? Oh, I'm so sorry about that. I thought someone just stole my car. <laughs> um I'm sitting upstairs in my son's old bedroom and I can see out the window in my peripheral vision and I seen a car leaving down my driveway going around the curve and it looked exactly the same weird unique color like a dark steel blue matched the dirtiness level and everything I had to take a break because I'm, I'm still look at that <laughs> anyway okay I don't even know where I am now I thought I'd just quickly explain in case it just caused some panic all right so this was row our last increase, row 21, and then we I've done one, two rows, so that's 24 stitches, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 30 on our third row. Okay, 31. I like how I finished my stitch before I left. 32. 33. 34, 35, 36, so this will be our last row, 12. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, and our last stitch, 48. Okay, for row 26, we are going to be doing this little um, fringe around the edge. And we are going to be going in the front loop only. So, if you've never done that before, this is where you put your um, hook, usually, under the two Vs. So, for the front loop, you're going to go in the hole, but you're going to come up through between the V's and just grab that first front loop. And you're going to do that all the way around. So the sequence for these little peaks is going to be one increase in the front loop. So one and two. And then you're going to chain three. One, two, Three, and then you're going to do an increase in the next stitch in the front loop. 
one and two. And then you're just going to repeat that all the way around. So in the front loop, an increase. Whoops. One and two. Chain three. One, two, three. And in the next stitch, in the front loop, your increase. One and two. Okay, so keep going all the way around. Don't forget about the front loop. So increase, one and two, chain three, one, two, three. Increase in the next front loop, one and two. Repeat that again. Front loop increase, one, two, chain three, one, two, three, and then increase in that front loop again of the next stitch, one and two. Your next set in the front loop, increase one and two, Chain three, one, two, three. And in the front loop, do your increase, one and two. And this should be our last one. Increase in the front loop, one and two. Chain three, one, two, three and increase in that last front loop, one and two. And then you're just gonna slip stitch in the next stitch and you're gonna tie that off and leave yourself a bit of a string because you are going to use that um, to tack these down once we get about here with the orange, just because it's all one piece, um, I needed a way to, when I changed from green to orange, so this wasn't just kind of flipping up in the air. Okay. Okay, grab your orange or whatever color you are making your pumpkin. And you're just going to wrap your yarn around to make a little knot with a loop at the end. And we are going to attach that um, to our stem. So make sure you have the stitches you're starting in on the bottom. Because if you have it this way and start going around this way, you're going to start making it inside out. So make sure... You're on the bottom, so when you start, you're going this way. So your outside stitches are showing. So go in that first back loop, grab your yarn, pull it through, make a slip stitch, and then you're gonna do one single crochet in that same stitch, and that will be your first stitch. Okay, so for row one, in the back loop, you are going to do one single crochet and one increase for a total of 18. So there's one and our increase, two and three, four, increase, five and six. Seven, increase eight and nine, ten, increase eleven and twelve, thirteen, increase fourteen and fifteen. 16, 
and an increase for 17 and 18. For round two, you're just going to go in your first stitch of the last round, and we are going to do um, two single crochets and one increase for a total of 24. So one, two, and your increase, three and four. And just repeat that all the way around. Five, six, increase, seven and eight. Nine, ten, increase, eleven and twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, increase, fifteen and sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen, and an increase, 19 and 20. 21, 22, and increase, 23 and 24. Let's just move our stitch marker here. For round three, you're going to do three single crochets and one increase for a total of 30. So one, two, three, increase, four, and five. Continue. What are six, seven, eight, and our increase, nine and ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, and an increase, fourteen and fifteen. Sixteen, 17, 18, and our increase, 19 and 20. Twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, increase for twenty four and twenty five, twenty six. 27, 28, and increase for 29 and 30. Oops. Row four, we are going to do four single crochets and one increase. Repeat that all the way around for a total of 36. So one, two, three, four, and our increase, five and six. And then just repeat that sequence all the way around. Seven, eight, nine, ten, Increase 11 and 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. Increase 17 and 18. 19, 20, 21. 22, and our increase, 23, and 24. 
25, 26, 27, 28, and increase 29 and 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, and our, <clears throat> excuse me, increase 35 and 36. Row five, we are going to do five single crochets and one increase for a total of 42. So one, two, three, four, five, and our increase six and seven. Repeat that all the way around. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and our increase thirteen and fourteen. Fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, and our increase, 20 and 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and our increase, 27 and 28. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and our increase, 34 and 35. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, Oops. and our increase, 41 and 42. Okay, now we are going to sew, um, well not sew, tack on our little vine here. So thread your green or whatever color you use for the stem. And I'm just going to put this on the other side somewhere up close to where we joined the two different colors together. And all I'm going to do I think on our second row we made, or is that our third? So one, two, three, that's our third row. Just gonna come up, and I'm not doing this tight, I'm just tacking it down just so it doesn't flop around. So when you go through this way, up through the one part of the stitch, you're not gonna pull this tight, you're just gonna leave that kind of gently straight, not loose, but don't pull it tight. And then you're just going to go down into the other side of a stitch and back through that exact same hole. And you're going to do that all the way around, kind of just checking that they're sort of even. And then go back up through that row into one of, <clears throat> sorry, oh, I should bring water up here into one of the stitches and then back down. <clears throat> Just catch another part of the stitch somewhere in here.
And I mean, if you don't get it perfectly even, see I came down a stitch here, so I'm on my fourth row here, it's not going to matter. So wherever you feel, it kind of looks and falls into the right spot. So, you know, I'm coming back up. It's just because the way you crochet in the round, it kind of isn't always even, kind of on an angle. So, it kind of makes these not quite straight. You'll notice that when you put eyes and stuff on, that one might seem just a touch lower, even though it's in the same row. And then, where is this guy? This is a funny row. How about that? I'm going back up. Okay. This is my last one. And then when you're done, you're just going to come on the other side. And you can tie it here, or you can come over here. I'm going to tie it to this, just because then I don't have to weave it in, and I can keep the knot there. And know it's secure. You're not going to see any of this because it'll be all on the inside. Okay, so for row six. We're going to do six single crochets and an increase all the way around for a total of 48. Now, I'm getting high in my numbers here, so if I screw up, I'm just going to start counting 1 to 8 instead of um, consecutively all the way around. So 1, 2... Three, four, five, six, and then our increase seven and eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, and our increase, 15 and 16. Hmm, this stitch does not want to come through for some reason. Okay, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and an increase, 23 and 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and our increase, 31, and 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, and 
and our increase, 39 and 40. This should be our last one, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, and our increase, 47 and 48. Okay, so for row 7 to row 15, you are just going to do 48 single crochets all the way around. Um, that'll be 9 rows, and I will let you do that on your own, and I will do mine off camera, and I will join you back when we're ready to start row 16. Okay, you should be done your nine rows of 48 and ready to start row 16. And if you're not sure um, because of this, how to count, you can come down to your last increase on row six right there. You can see there's two stitches there. And just start counting your nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so for row 16, you're going to do six single crochets, one decrease for a total of 42 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven is your decrease. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and decrease 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 is a decrease. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28 is a decrease. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 is a decrease, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, and 42 is a decrease. Row 17 is going to be five single crochets, one decrease all the way around for a total of 36. So one, two, three, four, Five decrease six seven eight nine ten eleven decrease for twelve thirteen. 
14, 15, 16, 17, and decrease 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and decrease 24. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and decrease for 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and decrease 36. Row 18, you're going to do four single crochets, one decrease all the way around for a total of 30. So one, two, three, four, decrease five. Six, seven, eight, nine, decrease for ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and decrease. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, decrease 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, decrease 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and decrease for 30. Row 19 is going to be three single crochets. One decrease for a total of 24. One, two, three, decrease four, five, six, seven, Decrease eight, nine, ten, eleven, decrease twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Decrease for 16. 17, 18, 19, decrease 20. 21, 22, 23, and decrease 24. 
for row 20. We're going to do two single crochets, one decrease for a total of 18. So one, two, decrease, three, four, five, decrease, six, seven, eight, decrease, nine, Whoops. Ten. Eleven. Twelve is a decrease. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen is a decrease. Sixteen. 17 and 18 is a decrease. Okay, before we go any further, we are just going to stuff this guy up and um, take care of his stem. So we are... If you're using um, wire or a pipe cleaner, you're gonna wanna make sure you bend it over so that this part is up in the top because if you use this part, it's going to eventually come out and poke through and you don't want any of that um, happening. I am going to use um, just some garden tying wire. It's um, just from the dollar store. And if you find it there um, seasonally, I would say grab a pack because you never know when you're going to need it. And it's fairly cheap. Okay, so if you don't have any wire, you can just take a little stitch and, and um, tie it or tack it down like that. Um, you might not be able to put the spider on if you do that if you're doing the spider maybe you could tack it up here and let it hang that might work okay so measure it out about the length of your stem and then you're just going to twist it just to kind of secure that end up top you can go all the way down if you want might just loosely kind of do that. Okay, and you're gonna clip that off. And you're gonna put it up inside your stem. Just gently thread it up and through there. You may have to help it out a bit. If you stretch this part, it's not going to matter too much. Okay. And then we're going to add our stuffing. I didn't stuff the top half. I only stuffed the bottom half. I'll let you decide how far up you want to stuff it. You want to make sure you go on one side of the wire. Maybe I'll do a little smaller. One side of the wire on one side. And just kind of try and get on the other side of the wire. Just so it's not right along the stem. Okay, stuff that guy up. 
Oh, I'm not doing this very eloquently. <laughs> Look at this mess. What is this? Okay. Sorry, this is where I waste a lot of videoing time. But, I figure if you guys are doing this at the same time, I might as well do it at the same time too. So you want it fairly firm, but don't stretch your stitches out. If you find you're always stretching your stitches out and you can see the stuffing, um, try going down a hook size. Sometimes it's your tension, sometimes it's just the yarn and needle you're using. So maybe you need thicker yarn or you want to use a smaller size needle. Okay, a little bit more just so we can get the shape. And I'm going to kind of spread it out this way. And that will help shape your pumpkin so he's a little more wider than tall. And also make sure you're not stretching it right here too bad when you do do that. You just shape them how you want them. Turn up my back's here so I'm going to kind of Put my guy this way. Okay, now grab your eyes if you're using safety eyes. And you want to find kind of these two. This will be the center of, where, of him. Actually, you can mark that right now too. And that kind of keep us. So if we make that the center, and we'll just kind of come down about nine rows so right where your colors meet one two three four five six seven eight nine that's where my eyes are on that one and i felt like they were a little low so i'm gonna put mine up a row or two and try that so you're gonna have them about one two three or four stitches apart Um, I mean from center. Um, one, two, three, four. Oh, I forgot to put the things on. Usually I paint my eyes. So I'm not used to having to have a little sparkly thing underneath. Your eyes can go anywhere you want them. Just play around a bit. That's usually my hardest part. Of, I would rather crochet this whole pumpkin than um, pick where the eyes go. I can spend days just looking at it pinned in. Now, if you're going to bring them together, that might be a little close. Up to you. I think I'm going to leave them there and not bring them in as close together. I'm going to bring mine down, I think. We'll see as I get going. This one is one, two, three, four, five from the outside edge of the eyes. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So we'll put the backs on there. Watch out for that pin if you used one. Make sure there's no stuffing in the way and put your back on. Listen for the clicks. Again, try not to stretch out the bottom too much if you're doing it like me. Um, you can take the stuffing out, put them in, and then try restuffing it after. Did I get both clicks? I think so. Okay. Okay, we're going to do the vine right now. So um, tie yourself a loop, leaving a little bit of a tail, 
in case you need that to um, tie your um, vine to your pumpkin. And we are going to chain 20. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And then you're going to do three slip stitches starting in this second chain from the hook. So not this one, this next one down. So a slip stitch. And then you're going to go to the next stitch and do another slip stitch. And then the next stitch, one more slip stitch. Now you're going to go um, three stitches in every chain all the way down. Now when you do this, make sure that your chain isn't twisting and you're getting on the wrong sides because your um, chain will not twist properly. Okay, so one, two, and three in the same stitch. And then in the next stitch, you're going to do three single crochets again. One, two, three. You can see mine's already starting to curl. Another three single crochets in the next stitch. One, two, three, and just let it curl on the bottom there. Or, or if it's not curling, kind of guide it with your thumb as you're going. Three more single crochets in the next stitch. One, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna speed up a little bit now here, I think. <laughs> okay, so three, one, two, three, Three in the next stitch. Oh, I know what my problem is. My yarn's not coming out. One, two, three. Make sure your chain's not twisting. One, two, three. Next stitch, three more single crochets. One, two, and three. Another three in the next stitch. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oops, three. Three in the next stitch. Oops. One, two, three. Three in the next stitch. One, two, and three. Three in the next stitch. One, two, 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 Three, and then I kind of, oh, 
Well, that was my last stitch. So I'm just going to put a single crochet in there. And then, so that was 20, and it's gonna, this is how long it's going to be. If you want to make it longer, just do your chain longer. The next one I'm going to do is going to be shorter. But if you think this is short and you want a longer one yet, then instead of doing um, the 15 chain that I'm going to do, do a 25 or a 30. General rule for me that I found is it's about half the length of your chain. So if my chain was this long, then my little curl is going to be about this long. Okay, so now you're going to chain 15 or whichever number you choose. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15. And you're going to do your three slip stitches down the next three stitches, just like you did before, starting in the second chain from the hook. One, two, three. And then you're going to do your three single crochets in each stitch all the way back down. Uh, maybe I'll take this time to say if you like my videos, make sure you subscribe, um, hit the like button, Send me a comment. Um, I also have a Facebook page that I will link in the bottom in the description. And if you want to share something you've made off my channels, you can go down there. And there will be a little post with a YouTube icon that says... Um, YouTube share or something share your work with me um, What else Oh anything you see in my videos right now um, are all my own patterns and I have a YouTube video for each and every one some better than others um, but if you do like my style of crocheting you can find them in um, on my channel under my playlists and here's my last one two three and I'm just going to slip stitch again somewhere into the other, into the other um, half. Doesn't really matter where. And then you're going to tie that off. I'm going to do mine twice. that oopsie here are my wire cutters falling in my coffee cup okay so to put this on um, I just tack it on you can do a little bit more if you want if you want to put it through a couple of times if you want to weave um, sew down this a little bit but I'm just going to twist them how I want them and then just kind of put it here on the side opposite of where I want this to bend and I'm just going to go in and out a couple of times on one of these stitches making sure I pull that knot through inside if I can 
Actually, I might go up this side too. Oopsie. See, I didn't leave my strings long enough. I'm just going to run that one more time. Just go in and grab a couple stitches and then come back out and then give it a tie. Oops, I didn't watch if that was in the video or not. I hope so. And then you're just gonna take your ends and you're gonna thread them down and through and just out somewhere. I like to always try and choose the back. Um, Whoops. And then you can just kind of make those go however you want them. To do the spider, you're just going to make a loop at the end. And we're going to put eight single crochets in there. So go in your loop, grab your yarn, pull it through, and you're going to make one chain just to secure that to your yarn. And we're going to do it for round one, eight single crochets. So one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Grab a stitch marker if you need one. And for rows two and three, you're just going to do eight single crochets all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, and eight. So that's one row and our second row, another eight. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. For round four, we are going to do four decreases. Um, you can put them in the back loop. But there's kind of no point. There's, this is so tiny and we're going to be pulling it up inside and not stuffing it. So um, for me, I'm just going to go regular way. So one decrease. Two decreases. Three decreases, whoops. 
and our fourth decrease. And then you're just going to tie that off with however long a string you need for hanging. So for me, if I need six inches, I'm going to cut 12 just in case. Or if I need four, I'm going to do eight. Just so you know you have enough string at the end. Okay. Get your needle. And you're just going to go through the loops. I just kind of um, close this up. Give it a little tie. Then you're just going to come up through the center of the bottom, through um, the loop hole that you started with at the beginning. And you're just going to pull that up so that and bring that all inside. So you just kind of have like a little gumdroppy kind of shape. I'm going to do the legs in a different color just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so all I did, I just want to find a stitch in the middle and you're going to tie it to that stitch. You might not want to use the one that you pulled through because you might loosen that. And then you're just going to give it a tie. Once or twice. I'm just going to make mine a little shorter so they're easier to deal with in the camera view here. But they don't need to be as long as that anyway. Because you are going to really cut them down. So then you're going to separate all the strands. Um, assuming you're using a four strand. And I'm just going to do one side. Um, so I'm just going to take each strand now. Whoops, that was close. And you're just going to put four out and through on one side and four out and through on the other side. And it's going to get a little confusing with all your little legs, but just take your time. Doesn't really matter how you go out, just kind of keep them on the same level. I'm going to put that one far, a little far back. I can't even grab it. Where is it? Yeah. I did, so I think I'm going to actually put this one in between the two. Did I not even grab it? <sighs> I don't know what happened there.
Okay, so you have your four legs on this side. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then you're just going to um, cut them to pretty close to the length that you want. So I think this looks like it's probably one and a half, two inches, probably one and a half. Um, and you notice how they kind of split? If you like that, you can just leave them. But mine weren't hanging down after I cut them. After I cut them, they were kind of out more. So what I did was I, I made a loop in the end of my string. And then I just went and I took some Mod Podge. As you can see, they're kind of, if I get close, see, they're a little messy. But it kind of works. Um, I just took Mod Podge and I, like a big glomp on my finger, and then I just pulled them down, each one. Tried to keep them separated as I did that. Well, I did it like this, hanging down. And then when I was done, because this hand's going to be full of glue. So before you do that, make sure you're prepared how you want to hang it. Because you're not going to have much. You're only going to have one hand. And then I just hung mine on um, the towel rod in my bathroom. Um, so you could probably hang it on a kitchen cupboard um, knob if you have the right kind. Um, and then after I was done, there was a lot of this kind of thing. You just trim that off and then your spider's good to go. And you'll just thread him in there and tie him on. And then hide this string wherever you want. Okay, before we close this guy up, um, I'm going to be using this video twice. Once to do just the pumpkin. And then I'm going to be using it in another video um, to make a little pumpkin man. So if you're here just to do the pumpkin, um, we will just be closing it up right now. If you're here to do the man, or you've come here to do the pumpkin and you've decided, oh, maybe I'll do the little pumpkin man, I will put a link into the description either for the full pumpkin man or I will be making a part two and the link will also be down in the description um, saying part two. So we'll close this guy up and I will show you um, probably without thread how to mold this guy's face. And then you're either going to click the link in the de description for part two or we're going to just, you're going to skip this part. I'll put a timestamp in and we'll just keep going. Okay, for the arms, you're just going to make a loop. You can also do your um, magic circle, whichever you prefer. You're going to go in your loop, grab your yarn, and chain one just to secure that onto your loop. And then you're going to start your single crochet. So for round one, it's going to be eight single crochets into the loop. So one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Grab your stitch marker if you're using one. And for the next two rows, you're going to do eight single crochets all the way around. And I'm just going to count eight times two. Um, instead of counting separate rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
to three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Flip your marker, but keep counting. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen and sixteen. For row four, you're going to do one single crochet and one increase for a total of twelve. One increase, two and three, four increase, five and six, seven, increase, eight, and nine, ten, increase, eleven, and twelve. For rows five and six, you're just going to do 12 single crochets all the way around, and I'm going to count the same 12 times two for two rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Flip your stitch marker. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, but don't finish that stitch because we are going to change back. Um, to green Ow. Okay So if you're new to color changes all we're gonna do is take our new color tie it on to our old color down as close as you can, nice and tight, like this. Tie it about two or three times, because you want that to be nice and secure. And then we are done with the orange, so we can cut that off. And then you'll just finish that last stitch with the green. Flip your stitch marker and we are ready to do row seven, which is one single crochet and one decrease for a total of eight. So one and two is a decrease.
three and four is a decrease. Five and six is a decrease. Seven and eight is a decrease. Um, now, rows 8 to rows 13 is just going to be 8 single crochets all the way around. And I'm going to do those in um, 2 sets of 8 times 3, if that makes sense. <laughs> it will as I get counting. So, 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's one row of three. Nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, that's two rows. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 24. So that's three rows of the six rows we need. So I'm just going to redo what I just did. Three more rows, counting by eights. So one. Oh, my yarn's getting squeaky. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Flip your stitch marker. Nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, flip your stitch marker, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Okay, you can take your stitch marker out and you are going to put a little bit of stuffing, whoops, a little tiny bit of stuffing in the hand.
just to sew just enough so that the bottom of the hand is firm and then the arm is flat and then we are going to do three single crochets across the top make sure you get through both sides of the the arm so one two and three and then you're just going to tie that off leaving a little bit of a tail just cinch in the arms later and you are going to be making two of those Okay, for the leg, you're going to grab your green or whatever color you're using. Make your knot with the lip loop on the end. And you're going to grab your yarn, pull it through, make your chain one just to secure that yarn remember that it's not a stitch and for round one we are going to do six single crochets into the loop so one two three four five Six. Grab your stitch marker. And now we are going to do for round two, six increases. So that's two single crochets in each stitch all the way around. So increase. One and two. Uh, increase. Whoops. Three and four. Increase. Five and six. Increase. Seven and eight. Increase nine and ten. Increase eleven and twelve. And I apologize for the squeaking. I think these it's hot out today, and uh, I think these lights aren't helping. For row three, we're going to do one single crochet, one increase, um, for a total of 18 all the way around. So one, two, and three, four, five, and six, seven, Eight and nine, ten, eleven and twelve, thirteen, fourteen and fifteen, sixteen, whoops. And 17 and 18. I don't know how to keep wiping it, but I don't know. I 
Don't try the old run it through your hair business. I don't think it matters when your hands are all sweaty. Okay. Row four, we're going to go in the back loop. And for the back loop, if you have never done that before, instead of going here through under both loops, you're going to go down through the V and out under the back loop. Okay. So just 18 single crochets all the way around in the back loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, Sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Okay, so round five, we are going to do one single crochet and one decrease all the way around for a total of twelve. And we're back to the normal way. So one and a decrease. Two, three, and a decrease, four, five, and a decrease, six, seven, and a decrease, eight, nine and a decrease 10 11 and a decrease for 12. oops okay now for rows Six to eleven, which is going to be six rows. You're just going to do twelve single crochets all the way around, and I'm going to do um, three sets of twelve two times to make up for those six rows. So one, two. Oops, three. I don't know why my yarn keeps catching. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, flip your stitch marker and keep counting, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 
24. Flip your stitch marker and keep counting. 25. 26. 27. 28. 29. 30. 31. 32. 33. 34. 35. And 36. Now we are just going to keep doing the exact same, same thing we just do, or did, sorry. We're going to do three rows of 12 to get our total of six rows, and we're going to count just like we just did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Flip your stitch marker and keep counting. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Flip your stitch marker and keep counting. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36. And then you can get rid of your stitch marker. And we are just gonna put a little bit of stuffing in the bottom of the foot. That'd be too much, okay. And only in the bottom because we want to have some flat up the leg. So when it's sitting, It's like this, because if it's like this and you try and close it, your little guy is going to want to tip backwards instead of sit upright. So you want to be able to like move him, have him sit upright without having to really make him move forward. And you want the bottom of this foot to be on the flatter side. So kind of push your stuffing into the corners of the leg. And then we are just going to stitch him up. So you're going to fold him in half. And then you're going to go through this side of the stitch or leg. You're going to come up and go through that side of the leg. Make sure you got both sets of loops on each side. And then we're going to do six single crochets across the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty
three and make sure you're getting through both sides. Is that three? Four. Five. And if you get like me and you're really close to the end and you can't find another stitch, just put two stitches in that last one. You need six stitches on this leg. And then you're just going to leave a little bit of a tail. And make sure you make two of those. Okay, so now that you've jumped past the just the head portion and you're going to continue to the body, you all should have been left on row 20. And you are going to take this last increase out because we got to change color. And you're just going to finish that. Start that increase so you have three loops on your hook and then you're going to do your color change. So if you're doing like me, you're just going to tie that on up tight close a couple of times. Oops, sorry, you can't even see what I'm doing. Oops. And you're going to finish off that decrease. Um, if we're all in the same spot now, we should have six stitches to get to um, our arm and then three stitches six stitches and then three stitches on this side if you're not sure or yours looks a little funny fold it in half i would go from the front make sure it's nice and even find your side and mark your three stitches where your arm would be so this would be the center of the side and this would be one stitch of your arm and another stitch of your arm because you have three um, stitches in your arm. And then you can just mark that. And that will be where you start your arm. But we all should be pretty close to the same spot unless something really went wrong. Okay, flip our stitch marker. And uh, for me, and most of us, it's going to be six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you're going to grab your arm. Or keep going till you get to your stitch marker. And you're going to make sure your, your tails and your strings from your arm are facing the front. And you are going to go through one, two, three, your first single crochet. Oops. Go through your first single crochet on the top of the arm and then your next stitch. So right there. Oh, this is nice when it's different color. So you have your body stitch and then your next stitch is going to be right there. So 
So you're through the front and the back, or the arm and the body. And you're just gonna make your three single crochets just like that across the arm and the body. Two and three. Then we should have six single crochets across the front. One, two, three. Looks like we're about center, so that's good. Four, five, six. And then we should have three um, left to put in the arm. Make sure the strings are in the front. And you're going to go through the arm. And then the next stitch in the body. And then do that all the way across for these three stitches. So that was one. Two. And three. Okay. So we are going to count that as row 19 of the body, even though this was row 20, because I'm going to come back in, oops, he's facing the wrong way, um, with some video I've already taken of this guy, so I don't have to re-video pretty much the same thing it's here. But we'll come back for the legs, um, just in case we're a little off there than in my previous videos. Um, okay, so... So this will be row 20 of the body and it's going to be two single crochets and one increase all the way around for a total of 24. So I have one, two, and an increase, three and four, five, six and an increase seven and eight nine ten and an increase eleven and twelve Thirteen, fourteen, and an increase, fifteen and sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. 21, 22, and your increase, 23, and 24. Okay. So I am going to stop um, here, and I'm going to switch to my other um, video where I have um, it, you'll be going in the brown starting on row 21 you don't have to do anything it's just going to come next I just got to go figure it out on the computer and then I will come back and join you when you guys get to row um, 31 and I will just check that the even evenness of where the um, legs go compared to um, where we end off because this has a couple more rows in my other pattern.
All right, so I will see you in a little bit um, for rows 21 to 23. We're going to just do 24 single crochets all the way around. So that'll be three rows of 24. One, two, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whoops, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. And I'm just going to keep counting around till I have um, 24 times 3, so 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. So that's two rows. We got one more row. 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, and 72. And there's our three rows of 24. Row 24 is going to be three single crochets, one increase, and repeat that all the way around. So one, two, three, And increase four and five, six, seven, eight, increase nine and ten, eleven. 
11, 12, 13, increase 14 and 15. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, increase for nineteen and twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Big naughty mess here. Twenty three, do increase twenty four and twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, and our increase twenty nine and thirty. Okay, rows uh, 25 to 30 is just 30 single crochets all the way around. So that's six rows. And I am going to let you guys do that on your own. And I will come back for row 31. Okay, you should be done your six rows of 30 single crochet and ready to start row 31. And so for row 31, we're going to do three single crochets and one decrease for a total of 24. So one, two, three, and a decrease for four, five, six, seven and a decrease for eight nine ten eleven and a decrease for twelve thirteen oops fourteen Fifteen and a decrease for sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, decrease for twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. And a decrease for 24. Okay, you should be up to row, just finished row 31. Um, three single crochets, one decrease for a total of 24. If it went as I planned and hoped, and now we are going to stuff um, his head and his body up. And you're going to want to make sure that the head is stuffed really firmly. I'm a tad bit worried that I raised his eyes up too high and I should have put them where I put the other one when I did the head originally, but it's too late now. I am forgetting though that I am bringing them down. Um, with some... Um, like I'm going to be pulling them down with thread, but 
Right now at this moment, they feel very high compared to where I imagine they should be. As you're stuffing, be very careful not to stretch out the stitches. See, these are starting to stretch, so I don't want to put any more stuffing right there. I'm just going to kind of shape his head a little bit, pushing it to the sides. So I'm pushing this way, this way, that way, so that when I bring them down, he's kind of crooked somehow, but we'll fix that. I think that's pretty good. Put a little bit of stuffing in his body. You don't want to put too much because um, when we go to start going around and add his legs, it's a little easier if, if he's not right full across here. So like, he looks full, but I can push that down quite a bit to get my stitches where I want them. Okay, now what we want to do is center our guy so we can fold him flat in half. And we want to find the center of the side. So this is going to be where the front starts and this stitch is going to be where the back starts. So we are going to mark this front stitch and that is going to be um, the first stitch of our first leg. So we'll just put a little marker there. We are going to go around up to this first stitch. We're going to put our first leg in, six stitches. We're going to put our second leg in, six stitches. And then we'll be almost right back to our stitch marker. And don't worry if our stitches are off by one stitch or anything, because as long as you're doing it this way, your stitches will be, or your feet will be in the front centered. Okay, this little stem is really in the way here. So start your single crochets around the back. So one, oops, two, And the stuffing here, that's not good. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then that brings me up to my stitch marker. So if you need one more or one less, that's okay. Take your stitch marker out, grab one of your legs, and I'm going to put mine to the front, middle. Just so when we're done, when we pull those in, we can pull them in towards the center instead of away from the center. All right, so you go in your first stitch of your leg and your next stitch of the body. And we are gonna do that six times across the leg. Pull it tight if you need to. One, two, three, make sure you're going through both um, 
parts of the leg and body stitch. Do our third one. That three. And we'll do four. do five and six okay grab your next leg and you're gonna remember how the the strings facing the inside on the front Unless you did it the other way, then just match it up the other way. So through the first stitch of the leg, and right there through the first stitch of the body, or the next stitch of the body. One. Two. Three, four, five, and six. And that brings us right to our stitch marker if yours went the same as mine. Okay, for round 33, you're going to do two single crochets and one decrease for a total of 18. So now we're closing it. So if for some reason you didn't have your eyes on, you make sure you get them on now because um, we're about to close. We just have three rows and we will be closed. Oops. So one, two, and a decrease for three, four, five, and six is a decrease. Seven, eight, and nine is a decrease. Ten, eleven, and twelve is a decrease. Thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen is a decrease. Sixteen, seventeen. And 18 is a decrease. Row 34 is going to be one single crochet and one decrease all the way around for a total of 12. So one and a decrease. For two, three, and 
of a decrease for four. and a decrease for six, seven, and a decrease for eight, nine, and a decrease for 10. and a decrease for 12. All right, now if you need to add more stuffing, I'm gonna add it now before we do our last row. I definitely need a little bit more stuffing. I don't know if I need that much. And remember, you don't need to have the body quite as firm as you had the head. Just enough that it's going to kind of stand up on its own and have a little bit of support on the bottom. Um, if you can, try and stuff the bottom so it's on the flatter side. So bring your stuffing kind of out to the sides a bit. And then he will sit a little nicer that way instead of having a rounded bottom. All right, I'm going to stop there. So see his bottoms are kind of on the flatter side. Now we are going to do round 35 six decreases and I apologize if this is hard to see I my lights are just in the worst spots and I keep hitting them okay so round 35 six decreases so one decrease, oops, you don't want to do that. Two decreases. Three decreases. Four decreases. Five decreases. Oops. And our sixth and last decrease. just going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And we can tie that off, leaving a tiny little bit of a tail. Well, not tiny, but a little bit of a tail. Pull that through and get rid of our stitch marker. Now I haven't done a prototype of this one, so I don't even know what it looks like sitting yet. I think it'll be okay. We'll pull those in a bit. So now let's start 
putting our end in. So we'll start with the bottom. And you're just gonna weave your yarn back and through the stitches of your last row. Pull that tight. And then you're going to just give it a tie somewhere where you can kind of pull it in and hide the knot you just made. So I'm going to tie mine twice. I'm just going to thread it down into a hole somewhere outside. I feel like this side. And just bring it out the back. And give that a clip with your scissors. Put these strings in. Well, what you want to do is kind of get these two knots hidden. So I am actually going to go in this stitch right here, come out the back. I'm just going to give them a good tug to kind of bring the legs together a bit. For some reason one's coming more than the other. Oh, it's a wrong string. And then we're just going to tie those. And we'll thread them out through the body somewhere. I got a bit of fuzz. Should I get them both? Nope, I only got one. Pull to get that knot out of there. Nope. And then we'll do the arms. So what you want to do, if you've never done one of my videos before, what I do is I take my my um, yarn and I go down in the, the stitch that I made when I joined the arm and then I come back out the back somewhere somewhere around the neckline and then we'll do the same thing for the other side So you'll find where that stitch is. So it's right there. And you'll come back out the other side where you came out with your other string. And then we are just gonna pull these in a little bit. Kind of tug the, the knot of the arm inside. I felt that one. And we're going to give these a fairly tight tie. 
just to make sure those arms kind of come in a bit. And those will be threaded out through the back again somewhere. I keep missing the second thread for some reason. I guess I do a lot of that for some reason. Okay, bring that down and out the back somewhere. Must have a little ball of stuffing in my waist. Give that a clip. Whoops. Okay, and now we will fix his face. So remember that long string I told everybody to hang on to when we finished the head? Um, before I explained I was doing two videos and blah, blah, blah. How many of us cut it when we did our color change? Because I did. <laughs> So we're going to have to do something a little bit different here. So I'm going to use one of these stitches and I'm going to come up with one side of the string and up with the other side of the string so that we have it kind of tacked here. So somewhere in one of these centerish stitches, we're going to put this in. And we want to have half on one side and half on the other. So just like this. I think I am actually going to knot it so I don't pull it around and through. And that knot will hopefully kind of slip up inside as we get going. So we are going to do um, the bottom to the eye first, and I might even just do that and be done. Okay, so we're gonna go up in the stitch that we have it tied in to just under his eyeball. So just like, can you see, just like that. So that is under his eyeball, it's just I've got it pulled and tipped so you can't really tell. So we're going to bring that up here. Give that a bit of a squeeze. You can kind of help it by pushing the eye down. And then one of the stitches right beside, you're going to go in and you're going to come back down through that stitch you just came out of or just went up in. So we're using the same stitch down here. Push that down, give it a tug. And now you're just gonna do that one or two more times just to secure that, um, uh, what would you call it? I guess, I don't know the shape, how much you've pinched it. Always make sure you go in a stitch um, that you didn't just come up through. Kind of looking okay. So you're just going to do that with the other string. Kind of keep it even. So you're going to want to go like this. Hold it so they're similar. And then if you want, you can go across a couple times this way. And then come back down and tie it down here. Now, my eyes feel like they're too close together to worry about this stitch. 
but um, you can give it a try if you want. I just feel like it's going to be a little overkill because it's already squishing that nose kind of together. Okay, so finish that up and I guess we'll come back and attach the spider and put the um, little cheeks on. Okay, sorry, I've changed my mind and I'm going to try something else too. So I'm just going to throw that in here now. Well, I've got these strings down here. So a lot of the pumpkins you see, they've got the segments. And I just decided I wasn't going to, but now I'm wondering if maybe I should. So if you want to put the segments in, I'm going to start with these the orange that I already have. So I'm just going to take it up and come out the back. Since we have six of these, we have an even amount. I'll just kind of give that a bit of a pull. And we'll come around the back. Ideally, you'd probably want to do this a couple of times. But I do not have enough string for it. So then you're going to want to come to one of these. I'm going to come this way. But I want to make sure I'm at the neckline. Yeah. Come out of there. One more stitch up. For some reason, I don't want to go there. Be careful not to break your string. So then you're going to go from here to the matching one on the opposite side. If your string was long enough, you'll have enough. If not, you'll just have to reattach somewhere and, um, is that looking okay? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to leave that one there because I got to get this one over here and up. Okay, so I'll leave you to decide if you're doing that or not doing that and then um, meet you for another part of this part. Well, I think I'm happy with him. I hope you guys are getting happy with yours. Um, I do. I am glad I did put these little... Um, divides in. So now let's do the um, do some cheeks. I just need a little bit of pink. Or you could do I don't know, brown maybe. I've got a heck of a lot of pink here. Somehow. So we're just going to decide where you want your cheeks. Um, I did mine on a bit of a slant last time. So go up in the side. This is not part of your cheek. That's just where you're going to tie when you're done. So somewhere along the bottom of the eye. You know what, I might put them... Um, no, I like the angle. So mine are down a, two stitches over a stitch, kind of. Just on an angle like that. And you just go in there two or three times around that little grouping of stitches. The other one I went twice. And I think... I'm going to go three times on this one. Two. And our third stitch we are going to take and we got to come over to the matching stitch on this side. So it's about here, I think.
you'll know after you get going and get your stitches started. You know, it never really works out right, but hopefully. And don't pull this too tight because you don't want, you don't want this little puffy cheek to be wrecked up. So go down two and over one. Is that how much we did? And then you're gonna do it. So you got it across three times. And three. Actually, I might end these out the bottom instead of over the side. So I'm going to take that cheek out the bottom. And I'm going to move this cheek string out the bottom too so I can tie it down there. Sorry, I'm kind of making this up as I go now. So... I need to get it out of the same hole I just took the other string out of. You wouldn't think that'd be so hard. And just make sure when you tie this that you're not adjusting and pulling down anywhere you don't want to be. And just give it a light tie. I don't know if I'm giving mine a mouth, so I'm going to leave you to decide if you're giving yours a mouth or not. I'm still undecided if I wanted that one to have a mouth. And now that I have kind of a bubble on each side, I'm not sure how a mouth it will look. But um, if I do, I will put a screenshot in it of it in um, in a video somewhere so that you can see and have a look at what I did if you want to do the same thing. Um, oh yeah, we need to attach the spider. Oh, I am ready to take a break from this. All right, he's kind of done. We might want to put a little um, orange string or a brown string, some kind of string to give him a little tie to kind of hide some of the mess we made there. Um, for the spider, I just kind of threaded it down inside with my needle all the way to back here somewhere. Oh yeah, see I haven't I haven't tied it off yet. Um, and then just tie it off down under here somewhere. Um, I guess if you liked my videos, um, make sure you subscribe, um, hit the like button. Um, Comment, let me know what you thought of it. Um, feel free to go down in the description and click the link to my um, Facebook craft page. And there is a, a little YouTube um, post. And you can go down in the comments and you can post whatever you've made. If you see anything here that you want to make... I um, have a video for everything. Here's my little stitch or pin guy. Everything here there is a video of. And you are free to make as many as you want. Sell them. 
Just don't uh, write out and share the pattern. Um, direct people over here so that they can come watch my videos too. Um, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the comments and everything that I hear. And happy crocheting.